When you think about how a goal is actually scored, you'd think there are thousands of different ways a team can create a dangerous opportunity. And you'd be right, a team can score a goal from anywhere on the pitch. But what if I told you that every opportunity ever created falls into one of eight different categories? Well, today we're going to be looking at exactly that, the eight official ways of getting past the opposition's back line. Now, these categories all refer to different ways a team can bypass the opposition's defence and create an opportunity by attacking the space behind the back line. Any attacking move will eventually reach this point, and it's here where these categories can help us understand what the main playstyle of a manager could be. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right in with the first way of creating an opportunity. The first category on the list is arguably also the most intuitive, the shot. A shot is the most direct way of creating a chance, as it immediately bypasses the defence and can lead to a goal. Only one player needs to be involved, and his position is largely irrelevant, as a shot can be taken from anywhere on the pitch, although XG fanatics may have something to say about that. It's a solution that can be used if there's little space behind the back line or if the player on the ball has no support around it. And it's important to note that approximately 15% of goals are scored from outside the box, so it's definitely always an option defenders will need to keep in mind. The second category is a dribble. Dribbling is often largely ignored by defenders as an excellent way of bypassing the whole back line. Similarly to a shot, a dribble only requires one player and is the most dangerous tool for an attacker to possess when in a 1v1, as a successful dribble can actually bypass the whole back line if the defending team isn't set up properly. An effective dribble will look to move the ball into space that the defenders have vacated, and so having teammates correctly positioned to distract the defenders or to create space will certainly enhance this move even more. Now, these first two categories are the only ones on the list that can be done individually without the need of any teammates. However, the remaining categories all require at least one or two extra teammates to be possible. The third category is the 1-2 or a triangle. If you've ever played football even from a very young age, this is a technique that all managers will insist their teams learn to do effectively, as it's a rather simple but extremely efficient way of moving the ball forward. There are, generally speaking, three types of 1-2s that a team will use. An external 1-2, where the ball moves inside the pitch and then back outside, creating space for the winger. An internal 1-2, which usually looks to free up the half space. And a vertical 1-2, which is mostly used in the centre to create a direct scoring opportunity. This is a very tricky one to stop, as defenders will instinctively move up when the striker lays the ball off, meaning the striker can open up his body and receive with space ahead of him. Next up, one of the most common ways of attacking the back line, and a FIFA favourite by mashing the triangle button, the through ball. A good through ball can immediately lead to a goal, and is a skill that the best playmakers in the world have perfected, with players such as Kevin De Bruyne easily picking out the runs of the strikers. The tricky part of this move is the timing, as it's very easy for the striker to go offside, and so he will usually need to curve his run resembling the shape of an L also referred to as a cut, given the sharp turn that this run usually needs to do. What's important is also the change of pace. The first part of the run should be relatively smooth, but for a quick burst of pace as soon as the ball is played, to gain that extra yard on the defender. One important thing to note before we move on to the next category is the terminology. A pass is considered a through ball if it goes between two defenders, with the striker behind the shoulders of either one of them while if the ball goes through the defenders where the striker is positioned, then this is referred to as a direct attack, the next category on the list. While the direct attack is similar to a through ball, the movement and positioning of the striker is slightly different. Firstly, this type of attack is more common with higher defensive lines, where the ball gets played from deeper on the pitch and there's more space for the striker to attack. And this is where it gets its name because it can be used to quickly bypass big areas of the pitch and directly attack the space behind the back line. Secondly, the striker's movement, rather than being parallel to the fence, will usually be forwards and backwards. The first movement will be a dummy run towards the ball, luring the defender off its line, creating space in behind, where with a quick change of direction and pace, the striker will now attack this space. The delivery into the striker can be a driven pass or even a lob over the heads of the defenders. Next up is the so-called passante, or any pass behind the back line into the defence's blind spot. A blind spot for the defence is usually an area directly behind one of the defenders, and is usually an area on the flanks away from goal, 
given that the centre will largely have more cover, including the goalkeeper. For example, if the ball is out on the right, a passante will look to lob the ball over the right back, where the striker will curve his run and get onto the ball in this position. It's a tricky pass to stop and one that slows down the defender's movement, as he will need to completely rotate his body shape to reach the striker. While it can be used in a more central position, the most common use for this type of pass is when the attacker is in the half space and the ball is being played on the outside of the fullback. The seventh way of attacking the backline is the overlap. An overlap is considered a run that starts from behind where the ball was played and into the space ahead of the player who made the pass. An overlap can be done with a minimum of two players, but is most effective with a third player present. The main idea behind the overlap is to create a man advantage situation such as a 2v1 or 3v2. There are different types of overlaps that can be done and include an external overlap to attack the space on the flank, an internal overlap to attack the half space, or if there is a third player present then there are a number of different runs that can be made. The third man can attack the space when the ball is laid off or can attack centrally to immediately create a goal scoring opportunity. The most important part for an overlap to be effective is that the player on the ball needs to lure the defenders out of position to create space, either by dribbling towards them or by sitting back and allowing the defender to put pressure on him. And finally, the last category on the list has a slightly different approach to the first seven. However, it is still a very big part of the game, the cross. A cross is a medium to long range pass from a wide area towards an opponent's goal, specifically with the intention of directly bringing the ball into the box from an angle that allows the attacking forwards to more easily aim for goal with their head or with their foot. They're an extremely frequent part of the game and on average teams complete 18.6 crosses per game, meaning teams will definitely need to master this type of delivery. There are a number of different crosses a team can use, from in-swingers outswingers, chipped and driven crosses, all of which can be dangerous. Which delivery a team chooses to use is also very important, as a drilled cross could be beneficial for some strikers. However, those same strikers may lack the heading accuracy required for an outswinging or inswinging cross. And there you have it, these are the 8 ways a team can create a goal scoring opportunity and attack the opposition's backline. By mastering these, your team will be unstoppable on every attack and will be a nightmare for the defending team to stop. And now, let me know what you think. What do you make of these 8 categories? Have I missed any or are there any you hadn't heard of? Let me know in the comments down below, along with any suggestions for future videos. And if you want to help support the channel, then check out my Patreon for exclusive content, or simply leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.